All right, hello friends and welcome to my workplace. So this is just gonna be a very quick showcase video to show what I've been working on for quite a while now. And I think it's pretty cool, so let's just jump into it and I'll explain it as we go. What I've done is I have created a glove that with an accelerometer over here controls the base rotation of that cue arm. And with this finger, it controls the gripper, so the pincer. With this finger, it controls the shoulder joint, so way up here, you can't see that. And then with the last finger, it controls the elbow joint. So let's take a look and do a quick demo. And basically what the code does, takes info from the accelerometer and it also takes info from these flexible sensors, which go into an analog digital converter. And there is a range of values based on this voltage divider circuit that I've created. There is a range of values that allows each finger basically to be mapped to the angle of each motor directly. And the same thing goes for this. I did a calculation for the accelerometer for the pitch. So let's take a look at that example. So right now we're just rotating the base. The default value for the elbow is a little bit higher, but if I try and keep it steady, obviously it's a little bit finicky, but Let's try the grippers. So the gripper is closed. Let's bring it down. Elbow down and grip. So you can see it's not the most perfect straight up thing, but it is pretty cool. Now, really quickly, I just want to talk about kind of the things that I've used. So the accelerometer is called an uh, ADXL343 accelerometer and we're basically just connecting to these four pins. So uh, the ground, the three volt, the SCL, and the SDA pin. And that is enough to give the data stream that I need. Um, we did try, or I did try initially, to connect everything through an Arduino, then into the Raspberry Pi, which would then send that data to the arm, and that did not work. Hey there, different day Oliver here. So I just wanted to explain really quick why the glove that I made is kind of delayed. There's a few reasons for this. Um, one is that the platform that we're working with is created by a company called Quanzer, and there is tons and tons and tons of code that has to run in order for those motors on the Q-Arm to update, which means that we do have some delay between me sending in the commands and the motors actually updating. So it's kind of difficult to get it to update real time, which is why you'll see it kind of bouncing around and not being perfectly accurate. The first iteration was kind of worse than it is right now. Um, and that's because we had this pass through, which I mentioned with the Arduino, um, and I was trying to use serial communication and that just wasn't working because the Raspberry Pi cannot process the data fast enough and then send it over to the QRM, which has its own massive code library. So all of those things cause delays, which is why you don't have the most perfect, smoothest experience. I think the best way to actually make this super smooth would be to connect this um, accelerometer and the flexible sensors directly to the motors themselves. So I would be the one running the code that creates the motors. So that's for a future iteration. I just felt that it was pretty important to clear that up because there might be some people saying, hey, Oliver, that's not actually this impressive. But you know, those are the constraints we're working with. So let's get back into the video. Um, so we got rid of the middleman and now we're just connected directly to the Raspberry Pi. Um, for the analog digital converter, we're using an MCP3008 and a voltage divider circuit. Um, and we basically just connected all of the proper pins to the Pi. I can post some of the links down below if you want to try this out for yourself. Um, but basically, we're just using three channels on the analog to digital converter because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have one of those built in. The Arduino did, which is part of the reason why we used it originally, but this is much better. It's much quicker and you don't have to use serial communication. I can show a little bit of the code. Um, I obviously won't show all of it because it's proprietary information. I can show kind of the main idea of what was happening. So what you're looking at right now is VNC viewer. Um, this is the project library. I obviously won't be able to show all of it, but I think it's important that I show a few things. So the important libraries that you need to make this work is math. Um, some of these other ones are just for making other stuff. Um, you need the board library, the bus IO library, the Adafruit libraries for the accelerometer. 
and the Adafruit MCP library for the analog to digital converter. And after doing that, you want to configure the hardware for the MCP. Um, so you need your port and device. So I did a, um, you can do like a digital configuration or a hardware configuration. I chose to do a hardware configuration because I just wanted the raw data. Um, so I wrote two functions. I wrote a translate function, as I mentioned, um, or in this case, a method, because we're in a class or in the QARM class. Um, and I basically just wrote the, so this is the value coming out from the raw item, so the ADC value, which like I said earlier was between three and six, the minimum and the maximum, and then the minimum and maximum you want to get it mapped to. And then you basically just take the difference between those values, scale the values, and then you just return um, basically the scaled value. And then the other function I wrote, which is a more important one, is the match movements. So in here, you start the I2C uh, bus communication, um, and you also initialize the accelerometers. Anyway, and then you multiply it by this to basically convert uh, from radians to uh, degrees. I have the ADC values coming from the MCP, so I'm basically just reading those values, so reading the three channels, um, so 0, 1, and 2, because obviously in math we start at 0. Uh, and then we have Basically, I'm just using the translate function for literally everything else. So for the base angle, gripper angle, shoulder angle, elbow angle, I'm just translating these values, uh, and then I'm mapping them to a parameter, which I then have to convert back to radians. Um, and then once everything is converted to radians, we have this function, which lets us change the uh, value, so like the absolute value of the angle of each item, and then I have a sleep function just to give the arm time to update. So that's basically it. It's not really that complicated. It was, um, it was like a surprising, it took me a lot of iterations to get simple code, and another important thing I learned is that hardware is so much more important than software. Once you get the hardware right, the software basically sorts itself out. So that is a very important lesson that I've learned. Um, and that is basically it for now. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ah, forgot to say that. Okay, see ya.